The garage is, is a myth. It is accurate to say we had a humble start. And when you have a humble start and you have no money, your friends from high school are the ones doing it with you and you're in your house. We never once discussed a product in the garage, never conceived of a product, never talked about features of a product in the garage. We did them a lot of other places, but people thought we had a garage with people sitting around in it. No. My name is Steve Wozniak, and I co-founded Apple Computer, and I'm also known as the Woz. I was only like eight years old, maybe seven years old. My dad was taking me around. He was an electrical engineer, and I decided I'm gonna be an engineer like my dad. I got the most valuable gadget of my life probably, a transistor radio. I could tune in radio stations and sleep with music playing all night long. My parents got me a kit. This was an important thing in my life. And there was a manual that showed you what order to assemble everything, bolt everything together, solder all the pieces in place. It took weeks to build. And I sat down there and I had a Morse code key, da 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 you know, and I, and I was a little ham radio operator. They didn't teach this stuff in school. They didn't have books in bookstores on it. Nobody else knew this stuff and I knew it. I grew up in Silicon Valley. We had to ride our bikes through orchards to go anywhere from our house, as far as you could see across the valley. But because the inventor of the transistor had moved to Mountain View, other companies had sprung out, they were building transistors. As the silicon industry was growing, the only people that could afford the early chips were the military and the government. And my father worked for Lockheed Missiles and Space Division in Sunnyvale. So I uh, discovered a journal in the hallway closet that only engineers would have. And the journal started out describing how numbers can be represented by computers as ones and zeros. And I practiced on paper and started writing ones and zeros and figuring out the number system. And I said, oh my gosh, this is easy. You don't need higher level math to know what a computer knows. Fifth grade math, you can understand it all. By sixth grade, actually, my dad suggested, why don't you make, you could play, make a machine that plays tic-tac-toe. You can make a machine that does that? I played every single game possible of tic-tac-toe. Took me two days on paper. And then I started making a set of rules. If there's an X in one and an X in two and an O in four, then here's your move. I, and I understood it all, but I didn't think I didn't think I was that special. In high school, my electronics teacher knew I would just play pranks in electronics. And he arranged for me once a week to go down to a company that had a computer. And I would get a manual on a new mini computer and I would design it. I got to where I could design it in two days. I felt proud of myself of knowing something other people didn't know, but I did not think I would ever have a job designing digital logic or, or computers because I didn't think there were jobs. When you became an engineer, you were like my father. You built radios and televisions and guidance systems and all this analog stuff. I, so I didn't think it was a job, but I enjoyed doing it. I said, whoa, this is going to be my passion for life, and I stuck with it. Then the homebrew computer started. Steve was not in town. The first night of the homebrew club changed my life. I didn't know a thing about this microprocessor chip. And I was scared thinking, I'll never come back to this club and they'll never know I was there. And I took the microprocessor data sheet home that night. And as I read its instructions, I said, oh my God, this is just like those mini computers I used to design in high school. And Steve said, we should start a company so I had to go to Hewlett Packard first because I would never do something behind Hewlett Packard's back. And I offered them my ideas on the personal computer after Hewlett Packard turned me down for the first of six times. Steve said, let's build a PC board. And that was the premise on which we started Apple. Then a local store wanted to buy computers with all the parts in them. I mean, Steve called me at work one day at Hewlett Packard and he said, are you sitting down? And he said, I got a $50,000 order. That was a freakish moment. Oh my God. And we were in business. But we knew it was a short-term product, and here's why. The Apple II was the computer that we knew would change the world. We knew this computer we weren't giving away. From high technology, the computer store. Introducing Apple II, the easy-to-operate home computer. It's called Apple II, the personal computer. 
in business schools. Now almost every single university has courses in entrepreneurship, but they teach sometimes business students to think you can write down plans, you can think about this, come up with ideas, raise money, hire engineers. And the engineers could be in Russia, they could be in India, be anywhere. I say, no, you should have the engineer involved in your starting team, thinking up the ideas of what your product or your service can do, and that you should never look at, oh, you've got to have a PhD, you've got to have a degree from college. You should always have at least somebody who's a businessman, who wants to have a business, a company that makes money to go on and, you know, lead the world, and those are the people that we get to know. And you should have somebody who is marketing-oriented that wants the product themselves, that is the market that wants what you have so desperately, they will make sure it's right and works well and it's not clumsy and not cluttered. Steve Jobs at first, he learned marketing from Mike Markula and he learned it very well, learned how to speak it well and convince people, this is what you should use a computer for. We were gonna communicate like never before. We were gonna have a lot better entertainment. We were gonna have better education. And I love that and I said, what is my talent? My talent is designing computer. You know, So that was an, a goal that was so deep in your core, it doesn't go away.